2022 is a really interesting year to buy a Tesla because this is the first time ever that Tesla is putting three different batteries in their vehicles and many people are unaware that they're even doing this. It's important to know the difference and in this video I'll explain Tesla's three different batteries and how they compare to each other so you can make the best buying decision for your Tesla. Now let's take a look at Tesla's first battery option, the Nickel Cobalt Aluminum or NCA. Nearly a decade ago, Tesla began utilizing battery cells called the 18650, which were manufactured by Panasonic for the Model S and Model X. Now the battery name comes from the dimensions of the cells, which are 18 millimeters in diameter and 65 millimeters in length, and the overall size is slightly larger than your standard AA battery. Now the Model S and Model X are still equipped with these battery cells to this day, with a single vehicle battery pack containing thousands of these cells. Now a few years later, in 2017, with the launch of the Model 3, Tesla and Panasonic developed a new and improved type of battery cell called the 2170, which is 21 millimeters by 70 millimeters and can store a lot more energy than its predecessor. Now, according to Elon Musk at the time, it was the highest energy density cell in the world and also the cheapest. The 2170 cell is around 50% larger by volume than the 18650, but it can deliver almost double the current. Now, the 2170 battery cell is currently what's used in all of the dual motor variants of the Model 3 and Model Y. Both of these battery cells are considered NCA batteries. Now, this battery chemistry produces some challenges to Tesla from the ethical dilemma of mining for cobalt to the high cost of nickel, which recently spiked to $100,000 per metric ton and ironically made the value of an actual nickel coin worth more than a dime. That's your fun fact for the week, actually. Now, currently the Model S, Model X, and dual motor variants of Model 3 and Model Y are all powered by NCA batteries, which leads to some things to consider when owning any of these vehicles. First, with an NCA battery, you do not want to charge it past 90% for your daily driving because that can lead to quicker and more severe battery degradation. Now, because of this, your daily driving range is only 90% of whatever the actual EPA estimated range is for your vehicle. So for example, if you have a performance Model Y with an estimated range of 303 miles, you can actually expect about 30 miles less than that for your daily driving. The only time you'll charge to 100% is when you're about to go on a long road trip when you need that full range. Now, I personally charge my long range Model 3 to 80% for my daily driving, which is why I'm a big proponent of EVs with at least 300 miles of range because you're not gonna get that full range all the time. Now, these NCA batteries are also more expensive to manufacture because of the cost of nickel and cobalt, which usually leads to the actual vehicles themselves being more expensive. And we've seen this play out over the past year as Tesla has steadily increased the prices of their dual motor vehicles with some models increasing by upwards of $10,000. Now this brings us to the next battery that Tesla recently began using, which is called lithium iron phosphate or LFP. The first Teslas with these batteries were the vehicles made in China, but they have now made their way to Europe and the US. Currently, Tesla says they're putting LFP batteries in all single motor models, which are now simply called rear wheel drive on Tesla's website. And right now, there is only one vehicle in the US that comes in a rear wheel drive option, the base Model 3. Now, these new rear wheel drive models started shipping in late 2021. But there's a new secret Model Y that could be coming soon, which may have an LFP battery pack, so stick around to the end of the video to find out more on that. Now to check if your Tesla has an LFP battery, open the charging menu on the touchscreen and go to set limit. If the battery image displays 50% and 100%, then your vehicle has an LFP battery. If the battery image displays daily and trip, then your vehicle is not equipped with an LFP battery. So what are the benefits of LFP compared to NCA? First and foremost, LFP batteries are iron-based and tend to be cheaper because they contain no nickel or cobalt and their energy density is lower. This makes them a great fit for the lower priced, lower performing single motor vehicles while keeping the cost down for both Tesla and the customer. They're also usually easier and faster to produce. The other advantage is you can charge LFP batteries to 100% even for your daily driving without any negative effects on battery degradation, which gives you the maximum estimated range all of the time. Now, this allows most people to get by with a smaller battery pack compared to NCA. The only downside is that regenerative braking is reduced while driving with a fully charged battery, so until the battery drains a bit, you'll get a slightly lower driving efficiency. Now, the reason you can daily charge to the maximum capacity is because LFP batteries have a memory, which is a weird quirk of battery chemistry and physics. 
the battery will sort of forget that it can charge beyond a certain limit if you don't keep reminding it that it can charge up to 100%. It's kind of strange, huh? If that sounds interesting, then you should check out today's sponsor, Brilliant, and more specifically, their course called Physics of the Everyday that helps you discover physics in unexpected places from refrigerators and toilets to traffic jams and water towers. Now, Brilliant is my favorite resource to learn about all things related to math and science. Brilliant is a website and an app that has over 60 courses to help you become smarter about a vast amount of topics in the science and math fields, from things like computer algorithms all the way to statistics and probability. Now, Brilliant's unique active problem solving approach helps you quickly understand core concepts through their guided courses, practice sections, and daily problems. I just finished their Physics of the Everyday course where I learned more about powerful ideas like forces, energy, and estimation through the lens of a physicist. Now, if you love technology and want to learn more about how physics is happening behind the scenes of cool things like Tesla batteries, go to brilliant.org slash Andy Sly to sign up for free. Also, the first 200 people will get 20% off their annual premium membership. Now, the other advantages of LFP batteries are safety and longevity. In general, lithium iron phosphate batteries do not explode or ignite. They're not entirely exempt from thermal runaway as they share the same structure as lithium ion batteries, but if a short circuit were to happen, bigger fires are more likely in high nickel batteries because nickel emits more energy than LFP batteries. LFP chemistry also usually offers a longer cycle life than other lithium ion chemistries. Under most conditions, it supports more than 3000 cycles and under optimal conditions, it supports more than 10,000 cycles, which is great if you plan to keep the car for a very long time. Now, the biggest downsides with LFP batteries are the cold weather effects and weight. They're heavier than NCA batteries, which will lead to more wear and tear on tires and slightly less efficiency. And their range tends to decrease slightly more in cold temperatures compared to NCA. Now, even with these small downsides, you can clearly see why Tesla has implemented these batteries in some of their vehicles. And last but not least, the most anticipated Tesla battery is the 4680 tabless cell, which was announced in 2020 at Tesla's Battery Day event. Now, this new battery is expected to change the future of electric cars by massively scaling battery production and producing bigger cells that cost less. Now, this new battery will have simpler manufacturing and fewer parts with five times the amount of energy, 16% more range, six times the power and faster supercharging. Now, these benefits are the core to what will move Tesla toward their overall mission, making their vehicles more affordable, travel further and charge faster. Now, these batteries also come with a brand new vehicle architecture that starts with single piece castings of high pressure die cast aluminum for the front and rear. Now, these new structural batteries are Tesla's first ever dual use battery used as an energy device and as a structure to the car. Now, these structural batteries improve mass and range. Now, all this is done so Tesla can cut the price per kilowatt hour in half and increase vehicle range by nearly 54%. A Tesla's brand new $1.1 billion factory in Austin, Texas will serve as the main hub for producing these new 4680 batteries and the new structural vehicles of which the Model Y will be the first vehicle to get these features. Now, earlier this year, Tesla confirmed that it has started to produce the Model Y at the Texas Gigafactory and eventually it will produce the Cybertruck, Semi-Truck and Model 3 there as well. Now, although there hasn't been any confirmed 4680 deliveries yet, hundreds of Model Ys have recently been spotted in the lots of the Texas Gigafactory, so it should be very, very soon. Now, this is why I and many others who have a Model Y on order have decided to delay delivery of our car. The Model Y that I ordered six months ago is actually scheduled for delivery in a few weeks, but I plan to delay it as long as possible to give me the best chance of getting a brand new 4680 Model Y from Texas. Some people think it's a risk to get one of these first generation models with a new battery and structural pack because there could be bugs and kinks to work out, but I'd rather have the first of what is considered to be the next generation of Tesla vehicles instead of the previous generation. Now, while it's probably true that Tesla, the company, will benefit the most from these new 4680 batteries due to cost savings, I still think these new vehicles are going to be great to own because of the technology, the safety, and the range improvements that Tesla is promising. Now, the biggest question is how will Tesla sell these new vehicles? Will they have more range and higher price, or will they keep selling at the same price while limiting the range on the new battery packs? Well, recently there was a new Model Y variant that appeared on the Fuel Economy website, and it's listed as an all-wheel drive with just 279 miles of range. So it's a dual motor, but not a long range, which makes it the first ever standard range plus Model Y. So what kind of battery will this new Model Y have? 
Some are guessing it will have an LFP battery, which we talked about earlier, but Tesla has stated that they're only using LFP in their single motor vehicles. So will they change that and put an LFP in this new all-wheel drive SR Plus Model Y? Or will this new Model Y get the 4680 battery and structural pack out of Texas? Now I've assumed up until now that Tesla would use the 4680 battery in their higher end dual motor vehicles first, but Tesla has proven that they can surprise people with what they do to their vehicles without telling anyone beforehand. Either way, you now know the differences between all three battery chemistries that Tesla is offering this year, so hopefully you can make a more informed decision on which vehicle you buy. Please subscribe to see what happens with my upcoming Model Y. Hopefully I get that 4680 Model Y from Texas. Whatever happens, I'll definitely be doing videos about it. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share with others. Thank you for watching. My name is Andy, and I'll talk to you in the next one.